elephants, elephants. Six hundred elephants. Six hundred elephants. Elephant. 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 Okay, got it. Yeah. Elephants, elephants. Six hundred elephants. Elephant. 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 Six hundred elephants. elephants. Yeah. Well done. We got through it. <laughs> Woo! A bit risky doing a um audience participation poem on Zoom, but I have done it before. Uh, shall I, I'll come back to Harrogate, shall I? Yeah. Uh, I realise I'm going to have to self-isolate for um 14 days in a quarantine hotel. Now I've just come back from South Africa, but it can't be helped. Uh, I'm going to hear from our guest poets now. Dawn lies golden over the grassland. Outstretched shadows welcome the days. Mast in the mist of the waking land, animals float in the pearly haze. Like islands wreathed in wispy silver, clumps of trees reach for the sky. Roots drink deep while water's still there. Juicy foliage tempts on high. Graceful giraffe and hefty elephant shared one problem, how to reach. Find solutions clumsy or elegant, high and wide grasp food for each. Across the swaying sunlit grassland, giraffes in patchwork camouflage stains. Browsing, gossiping, there they stand. Necks erect like working cranes. Elephant grunts as it humps and heaves, lumbering grey like a walking boulder, coiling trunk among the leaves, throwing the remnants over his shoulder. Green retreats from the dry savannah, rains are over, brown returns. Herds move on in the age-old manner. Hot air dances, empty noonday burns. Trees still proffer their deep drunk greenness. Animals browse in the welcome shade, following slowly. Waters may stream less, but nature's stratagems are still well laid. Trunks and necks among the branches extend the reach of nature's chances. And there's the illustration. Oh, yeah, thanks for that, Mary. It's lovely. It's, it's really nice. Thank you, Tim. Right. Um, and next, we're going to hear from Natalie. Who... Thank you. Thank you so much. This is Trophy. He's the perfect specimen, devoted partner, father of two, takes care of the family pride, an Oscar winner. No, the Oscar itself, tall, muscular, pure gold. He can be lazy, yes, but no more than other males. And females, well, they like preparing his meals. In return, he will fight for them till the death. That's the deal. He's the perfect specimen of his kind, and that makes him a relic. Not to be loved, honoured, treasured. No, to be hunted, collected, kept. His prowess squeezed into jars so that others may own a piece of him, be more like him. You see, they are excruciatingly weak, so weak that they cannot shoot straight. He's so strong, it takes him two days to die, naked, alone, in pain. This fine human specimen, devoted husband, father of two, with his beautiful lion's mane. We really should be looking at the flowers, but static beds don't radiate pizzazz. When every bird we see is new to us, when deep in every shrub a waxbill cowers, when doves and starlings stage non-stop renewal, when sugar birds and pintailed widers glue us immobile here for two ecstatic hours, and orange-breasted sunbirds glint like jewels. Below us sweeps an urban panorama. Above, 
a flank of table mountain towers where hawks and ravens clash in airborne dramas. These gardens, strictly speaking, are botanical, but how can we rove the groves when our high power lenses hold us hands to face like manacles? Anybody know the name of this animal? Is it Brian? <laughs> Brian. <laughs> We're watching Springbok pronks, their best known tricks. Today's been hot. We shed our weighty packs to swelter in the shadow of some rocks beneath the spandau cough. When we spot six with linen flaps unwrapped along their backs, leaping up like jacks out of the box, expressing joy with sinew powered kicks horned and hoofed, four-legged maniacs pogoing on taut, spring-loaded hocks. The status of the national symbol sticks to Springbok in the face of fierce attacks. Perhaps because their pronking habit mocks the old regime, it's like they strive to fix with rapture what the nation's history lacks. We tiptoe in and quietly close the door. The hide's a wooden hut on stilts above a bush pool where the animals come to drink. We scan the shore and tune our ears for any movement, but for several minutes, we don't notice there's a hippo hiding underneath the floor. We should have guessed it from the fetid smell, but we are so absorbed hoping we might see a lion, we overlook it, lurking in the well of lapping darkness down below the boards, bulging eyes and hairy nostrils, sighing guffs of sulphur from the depths of hell. The bushveld sleeps with nothing to be seen, but then inside the shack, we're startled by a baritone croak Abandoning our spotting scopes, we lean on hands and knees to squint down through a crack. The eyes glint up. The hippo breath evokes the aura one emits by eating beans. You know that phrase for something you ignore, the elephant in the room? It once seemed apposite because you'd think you'd know, but now I'm not so sure. Despite the dreadful waft of eggy fumes, but for the burp, we'd not have twigged there was a hippo hiding underneath the floor. I wake up and I look outside to witness something quite alarming. I think my eyes are telling lies. There's an eland in the garden. An eland is an antelope. It weighs a ton, has a blue-gray coat, a baggy dewlap at its throat, and eats with the pickiness of a goat, the sort of thing you'd rather hope you'd not find in your garden. Back at home, my flowers are growing, effusing like a euphoric poem. But I get gardener's block just knowing there's beasts like this about. It's equanimity as it noses my host's herbaceous display arouses an angry urge to shout. I watch in horror as it browses beds of begonias, blocks of roses, bougainvillea on the houses, sucks the sprinklers, chews the hoses. But the shout is stifled in my breast. I'm rendered mute despite my ardent antipathy to a horticultural pest, huge as an eland in the garden. I love all life, but my heart has hardened. I give no quarter to the rabbits. 
Cats pay dear for nasty habits, and if I see a slug, I stab it with a garden fork. So living here, how would I cope with bugs like this? I'd lose all hope when a one-ton antelope decides to take a walk. My sweetheart pleads, come back to bed, but it's too hard to disregard him. The twisted horns, the shock of red, cresting the brute's demonic head. The devil elland in the garden infects my dreams with dread. I wake up again, an hour on, hoping the hideous thing has gone. There's not an Elland outside no more. There's two of them. No, three, four. <laughs> I'm gonna have to stand up and jump around for this one. I'm looking at the grasslands, a fascinating vista of bush buck, bronte buck, buffalo and zebra, ostriches and wildebeest, far into the distance when something like a lamagaya, something like an eagle, something with the substance of an aeroplane drops from the sky, settles with the herds. It isn't a heron, it isn't a crane. A secretary bird? Is it a secretary bird? Though the heat shimmers, simmers, so the image is blurred in my wobbling binoculars, I've nonetheless inferred I'm looking at what's got to be a secretary bird, a secretary bird, a secretary bird. It really makes you wonder how this oddity occurred. Was it created? Did it evolve? There's an enigma that's hard to resolve. If there's a creator, he must have used the bits left over from the other birds, the bits that didn't fit. The mandibles are white, the face bright red. There's a helmet of spikes on the top of its head. It's a secretary bird, a secretary bird. It struts among the antelopes, completely undeterred. A secretary bird, a secretary bird. The most unlikely predator I've seen in all the world. Head like a hawk, legs like a stork. It flies like a kite, but it would much rather walk. Most commonly found down on the ground, chasing all the lizards and the mongooses around. A secretary bird, a secretary bird, the black tip tail extended like a ticker tape. I watch it dance, I watch it prance. It looks like a schoolboy wearing short pants with pink skinny shins down below the knees. I shouldn't take the mick, because it's a privilege to see a secretary bird. A secretary bird is perfectly adapted, although it looks absurd. A secretary a secretary bird, a secretary bird. I've never seen a bird like that. I saw you on the veldt today. You're so grandiose. Why did you need to run away as soon as I got close? Why do you need to run so fast? You could peel me like a guava. You're the champ of the heavyweight class. You could pulp me like papaya. And I'm so pleased to find you'd rather run away, run away, run away. Ostrich. Ostrich. Your backside's like a feather duster. Your body juts out like a bustle. All the dignity you musters in those strapping shanks of muscle. The land speeds you achieve are stunning, but every time I see you running, you crease me up, you look so funny as you run away, run away, run away. Ostrich. Ostrich. Run away, run away, run away. Ostrich. Ostrich. Why you will wear what you'd fetch at market. Is that why you don't trust your luck? A bigger bird makes a bigger target and you don't want to be a sitting duck. So run away, run away, run away. Ostrich. 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 Run away, run away, run away. Ostrich. Ostrich. You're the largest bird on the earth. One fried egg is a meal for ten. The height of a man, three times his girth. So you never want to let the people put you in a pen. Your meat would make a dinner for a regiment of men. A wise old bird is a bird that knows just when it's time to run away, run away, run away. 
Ostrich. 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 Run away, run away, run away. Ostrich. 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 You've one more survival trick. Your feet are tipped with razor spurs. You could disembowel me with just one kick. So it's comforting discovering that ostriches prefer to run away, run away, run away. Ostrich. Ostrich. Run away, run away, run away. Ostrich. Ostrich. You can't tackle rifles hand to hand. You can't fight a shotgun. That's why you never stand to battle, but skedaddle like a flash across the land. And you never, ever, ever put your head in the sand. You'd rather run away, run away, run away. Ostrich. Ostrich. Run away, run away, run away. Ostrich. Run away, Ostrich. Run away, run away. Run away. Ostrich. 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 Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I think I've had enough now. Elephants, elephants. Six elephants. Elephants. Six hundred elephants. Elephants. Six hundred elephants. Elephants. Six hundred elephants. 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 Six hundred elephants. Elephants. Six hundred elephants. 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 Six hundred elephants.